You don't try to come up with a character necessarily who you know has an interesting limp or talks a certain way. I don't think that's what makes you know a character like Commander Shepard cool. It's actually the circumstances that you put them in. The interesting thing about Commander Shepard is that he is, or she is, the star of the Mass Effect series, which was sort of a space opera role-playing game. I think it's about time we told the Commander what's really going on. This mission is far more than a simple shakedown run. Commander Shepard is forced into this role as protector of the galaxy, and they have a big burden that they're carrying. They are tasked with this like impossible job of saving the entire galaxy from extinction. Not only is Shepard a bit of an underdog, humanity wasn't for once you know, the top dog, they were actually the underdog, and Shepard was supposed to embody that. Anderson? Admiral? You look good, Shepard. Maybe a little soft around the edges. What made Commander Shepard so interesting was that when you started the game, you were able to define if Commander Shepard was a man or a woman, what Commander Shepard looked like, and even Commander Shepard's background. The ability to customize Shepard either in your own image or in whatever image that you'd like is crucial to your ability to identify with Shepard. I think that's what makes Mass Effect and Shepard special. You can't really describe who Commander Shepard is because it's different from one person to the next or from one playthrough to, to the next, so. One of the interesting things about interactive fiction and certainly role-playing games is that there is an element of the story and the characters not really being fulfilled, in my opinion, until they're in the hands of the player. You choose whether or not to be the good guy, the paragon, or, for lack of a better word, the asshole, the renegade. You can murder one of your squad mates if you want to, or lie to them, and you can be as much of a jerk as you want to, or not at all. With Shepard, we would give you these epic choices, but then we'd also give you these personal choices. So you could romance someone, you could befriend certain people, you could even talk to some of your best friends, like Garrus, and push them down a path. And that's your story. Mass Effect is the first series that I've ever played that lets you pursue same-sex relationships. And so as a gay person, that was truly the first time I'd ever played a game where I had ever seen that reflected back to me. I think he had a big impact on game development because game developers were able to create this hero that was both articulated in a very strong way without the player, but then also allowed the player to sort of inject some of themselves into that experience. I think that's the beauty of, of the trilogy is that there were so many different moments that might be, you know, the standout for you. Is it a romance scene? Or maybe it's, you know, a big party you do on the Citadel with everybody afterwards, or, you know, maybe it is just stopping the Reapers in the end. Like, that was it. That was your moment, right? And so everyone kind of has their own defining moment for Shepard. Well, Shepard comes from a long line of Avatar characters, particularly in role-playing games, games like Final Fantasy and Dragon Quest. And in the past, when a protagonist character is an avatar, generally the price of that is silence. You, they are generally, they don't speak, they don't have any personality. Shepard takes that to the next level and makes it so that this character that you control has agency in the world and is doing things. You're seeing what would happen if you were there. Mass Effect as a series is what got me into the genre of RPGs because it was kind of this perfect bridge between like being really like a hardcore RPG but also having more accessible kind of action shooty elements. People put a little bit of themselves into Shepard and therefore there's a little bit of Shepard in everyone, yeah. I'm gonna end this war on my terms. Then you will die knowing that you failed to save everything you fought for. I fight for freedom, mine and everyone's. I fight for the right to choose our own fate. So the original trilogy ends with you having to decide what step you're going to take to deal with the Reaper threat. I mean, the ending gets a lot of flack in general because people were mad that the end of the game is essentially determined by a three color-coded choice and a lot of people thought that that felt just too simple and watered down for everything that had happened before. The idea of being forced to make the choice, being forced to have the no-win scenario is really powerful. Wrestling with the decision at the end reflects Shepard's, you know, sort of his superpower, which is the ability to make a decision, an impossible decision, and stand by it and 
choose for the entire universe. He literally makes a decision for the entire universe. And that is something that no person will ever get to do in real life. So that's pretty amazing. Certainly when you look at the path of Commander Shepard throughout the, the trilogy, we were trying to establish that this would be a person who would be legendary in some way. Whether people would actually call them a hero at the end of the day, that well, was up to how you played. No matter what you do, your goal is saving the universe. So you are a hero. That is, that is in Shepard's DNA. Whether you are a good person is up to you. Whether or not you are a nice person is up to you. I think one word to sum up, you know, Shepard in all the myriad forms of who he or she was and all the choices they did would, would be hero. I mean, that was what we did create them to be, was somebody who would ultimately, you know, sacrifice anything to save humanity. And if that's not a hero, I don't know what is.